Thank you, Jouni. Yeah, so I work on field of marine structures. That's one of the most manic depressive fields that you can have in, in our university, I guess, because when we go up, we go up high and we go up fast. When we come down, we also do that the same, but to the other di direction. And of course, what we try to minim minimize here is that when we go down, the impact of that. So when I started, we were actually pretty low. The industry was not doing so well. And now what I think we have is a situation we haven't had for for last 50 years. So we have a dedicated owner on one of the biggest shipyards. They have been building ships for 200 years, two world wars, for example, and still the business is out there. So we are used to these uh, oscillations on the markets and what it does uh, for us. So I will talk about design of marine structures and uh, there has to be the geek part here, so I will try to link it to the continuum mechanics. Meaning that being a nerd, being engineer, I want to say something what we do really uh, as a challenging thing of, of science. But let's start first with the view to the future. So when I started here, everybody was saying that it's Aalto University, it's something new, we have to create the future. And I'm very bad on drawing. So I had to borrow others' work. And for me, this is a kind of one view what it can be. So the idea here in this picture is that uh, we have big cities nowadays. They are often close to the coast. And we are simply running out of land. And one idea is that we start to build on the sea right next to the, uh, to the land. And these are the kind of concepts you see coming up from uh, consults who who try to show us engineers what should the world look like. This is a bit more to the reality. So this concept has been taken far. It's actually a floating village or city of 40,000 people. It has an airport on top of it. And it's completely independent. So it means that all the infra that we need to live is at this uh, uh, marine structure. If you look at the trends of marine technology, everybody knows the wooden ships. Today what we have is a steel ships. So Oasis of the Seas is a good example of that. 300 meters long, 40 meters wide, 65 meters in, in height. And just to put it to numbers, about 500,000 square meters of steel plates and about 1 billion uh, euros of value. I often get the question that what about graphene? Can we put it on the ships? My answer is that if you can produce it on the magnitude we have for steel, perhaps we can do it one day. Uh, I don't want to investigate graphene. I want to enable the computational tools that we can do these future, uh, future designs uh, to think whether it's possible to do it actually or not. This is a good, really good uh, website, what I encourage you to check if you haven't done it. So National uh, Academy of Engineering has in states listed what are the 14 grand challenges that we have for this century in engineering. And there are items like clean water, uh, trying to simulate the brain. But what I'm interested about here is this restore and improve urban infrastructure. So this is really like a big challenge that we have to tackle uh, during our lifetime. As Joni said, uh, we try to integrate everything we do to teaching. And uh, we have a course uh, with the School of Arts called Passenger Ship Architecture, where we mix engineering students, architects and industrial des designers. And we say to them, create a future concept. This is what they come up with in five ECTS credit course. And now the question is that are we as teachers, are we tying their hands? So do we give them the tools to do these designs or uh, do we create them the tools that they actually can do these things? 
What is very important thing is that what we do in School of Engineering is that it's relevant. It's something that the industry actually needs. So whenever we define our research needs, what we do is that we look what is the Finnish uh, state of development, what do we want to do in Finland as a whole, and then we try to pick up from there our topics for research. So one topic what is uh, for me important is lightweight structures, so that we can use less materials, make better structures and uh, more efficient structures that way. So one key team here is so-called 3R team, which means reduce the weight, reuse the structures and recycle the structures. Good material for me is the one where we can have all these three R's uh, covered at the same time. And by the way, this way we end up using wood or steel currently. This is example of recycling. Uh, when my supervisor started 83, he came from Helsinki shipyard where this was then designed. And when he retired, this happened to the ship. So it was roughly the same lifetime in operation as the professor who designed this was. So this is the reality. We have to be able to do these things, really. And as said, uh, the big challenge here in Aalto is that we have to be able to do this, listen to society, do the science, and do the education all at the same time. So it's pretty easy to do one thing at a time, but to do all these three things at the same time is a big challenge. And we come to this in the end of the presentation more clearly. So what is really the research question is that sea is a pretty rough place. I showed you pictures of sea, which is calm. But in reality, you go this time of the year, you go from Helsinki to Tallinn, and you don't want to go there. Ship owners are giving you free tickets to be on the ships this, uh, this time of the year. When the ship is in the wave, it basically bends it this way and this way. So one wave, when it goes through the ship, it bends it in two directions with one cycle. And what can happen is this, we can have a fracture of the hull girder with a single wave if we design structures in, in a way that is not uh, done in a, uh, according to the first principles of solid mechanics. So what we need to do, of course, is we need to ensure the safety of these big things. As we talk about aesthetics, we talk about people have to live there, they have to enjoy their lives. We actually, uh, we are adding structural complexity there. So one key problem here is that we have very difficult geometrical shapes. We have prototype structures and we have to be able to assess the safety of these without any testing. So we don't have any chance to test these things. We just have to rely on engineering skills and uh, hope that they are safe. By the way, uh, you only told about this uh, Products, one of these typically costs about 1 billion and it's 80% finished product. So it's really positive news that we get these uh, things to Finland. Um, so what I do is that I want to develop a method where any material, any structural uh, design can be handled with one computational model. And here is one example. So this is a part of ship deck. It weighs roughly 60 kilograms per square meter. And then we have this for this 500,000 square meters, roughly, this stuff. If you want to say, change this to the graphene or carbon fibers, I want to have a method which doesn't care what's it, what is the material. So what we often do is that we homogenize, we average over the stiffnesses and we end up having simple matrix with the uh, relation between the loading and the strain that the structure gets. And what is really important here is the, the link. So what is the stiffness of the structure? And one fundamental assumption we do in homogenization is we say that the two consecutive scales, they are far apart. So if I say that the length of the beam is what you see here. And this is the unit that forms the beam. 
I say that these are really far apart. And you see here that it's only four unit cells. I want to remove this serious assumption in my research. So as said, regardless of the material, whether it's carbon fiber, stiffened steel deck, I want that we have the same mathematical tool for all of these. And the reason is simple. We have to model the geometry. I mean, it's complex geometry. It takes time to do it. So we want to have efficiency by doing it only once. So what's the tool here is that if you go to basic sciences, there is a term called a hot topic at the moment called multiscale modeling. So it's all about how you transi transit from one scale to the other, to the other, to the other, and you go back. So that's the science part. In engineering, we have to have some kind of tool. We cannot always do these computationally heavy operations. We have to have lighter means of doing these uh, things. And then we can, of course, apply it in the shipyard. As said, I aim for low computational cost, but at the same time for high accuracy. So that's why I have to work on the full scale from basic science to the applications. If I don't do that, I don't have relevance in my work. What you see here is very accurate, very time consuming analysis. So that's the uh, red curve and then the blue curves, they are corresponding very lightweight, 100 or 1000 times lighter uh, method in computations. What you see is that the accuracy is excellent here. So what we are analyzing here is a deck of ship, the stresses on the deck, and using these uh, special techniques, we can get very good accuracy uh, on the analysis. This is a static case. In reality, when we expose the ship to high ultimate loading, so we go to very rough sea, we bend it back and forth. What can happen is that the hull girder collapses. So what I do next is that I will look at the deck plating, which goes under compression and tension during one load cycle. And this is a nonlinear problem. As said, I'm a geek, so we do some geek mathematics. And what we can get out is we can get very accurate uh, responses also in the nonlinear range. The design typically happens from here to the left. You see we are right on top of the 3D FEM. And even beyond the design point, we are right on top of it. So this is compression. You understand that if you compress this paper sheet, it buckles. And we can model that very accurately. Then we pull it, so we take this paper sheet from previous presentation, we pull it hard enough, it fractures at some stage. We can do even that, and we can do it with that in a way that we have a hole in it. So one could expect now that we can use this in optimization safely. We can start to optimize the structures for lightweight. And that's where the problems come. Uh -huh. So, what we do is we take these big numerical models, we combine them with numerical optimization tools, we get weight reduction. What we have to do next is to say whether our algorithm worked out fine. So we have to say, is this re result we get, is it true, is it valid? And when we do that, we see that the accurate simulation gives us, for example, buckling load in transverse direction, which is here. And the theory gives us a result which is far off from the accurate answer. So the idea, the point what I want to make here is that we had this fancy method, which is according to the state of the art. We apply to the engineering problem and we end up having big problems. You cannot rely on the result. So what we do, did next is that we went to the FIDIPRO professor Jay and Reddy. He's expert in continuum mechanics. He works on nanostructures where the two consecutive scales are close to each other. And we started to apply the techniques he has been developing during the last 10 years to this problem. Um, before we did that, we went to the lab. We put this beam on a lab, and this is a really difficult case. If you try to calculate this with continuum, you will end up in big problems. So we tested the beam. We used classical theories. And what we do there is that we change the rotation stiffness of this T-joint here. So it's laser welded. We make it narrower and narrower, which means that the stiffness of the joint gets smaller and smaller. 
And what happens with the, what happens with the classical theories is that you get infinite deflections as the rotation stiffness of the joint goes close to the zero. This is physically not correct uh, behavior. And when we use the methodology developed in these advanced continuum mechanics, we get perfect agreement with the reality. And we actually converge to the right physical solution, even on the limit where typically beam theories fail. Even better thing is that we can get all the engineering aspects right. We can get the deflections right. We can get the stresses right. And it gives us a lot, lot hope to uh, solve the problems what we are facing in actual engineering. Now, if we do this same correction, we use the techniques. It's actually pretty long mathematics. What we get out is that we can actually get a better prediction for the complicated plate case as a part of Sif Hull as well. Now, we go back to the picture I showed you earlier. Where this all started was that the uh, Finnish Maritime Association, uh, sorry, uh, Finnish Association of uh, Maritime Industries, they wanted to have lightweight structures. So we listened to what society is saying. Then we hired a post, uh, uh, Philip professor, because we don't know how this should be done. So we start to learn from the best, really advanced learning process. Professors are learning from other professors. We apply it, we get good results, we get invited talks, we get top journal papers. Uh, actually, my uh, uh, requests for reviews, they exploded when we published a few of these papers. Hosting conferences. We get the joint papers with the industry, with top researchers. And actually, the whole thing is being funded by companies in Finland, including Meyer Turku, which is a ship yard, uh, Delta Marine, which is a design company, S uh, SSAB, which is a steel factory, and uh, Napa, which is a software house. And as a side product, we have now one professor in uh, British Columbia from the process. So he worked on this topic and he is getting a professorship in foreign university. This guy here got invitation for two years to be there. Why? Because the talent is there. And we don't know yet what happens with the doctoral student. So I would say that this is a, like a story of survival. How to do these th three things at the same time. And here is one, one example of that. And what has been very important to tell to the industry is that our role here is to educate the future game changers, as it says in the roadmap. It's to produce the new knowledge. But then one very important thing, especially in engineering, is to validate the existing knowledge. This is something what we often forgot, that we have to also validate the knowledge we have. Thank you.